and they are supporting my role and continuing this role. I'm supposed to be managing right now, but I'm here, so I'm so, so happy I continue my work with a collaborative. Um, very, very, very blessed with this. Um, so get a, grab a seat and have some waters up here if you need some more, and we hope you enjoy the meeting. Um, some of our key speakers are running a little late in a meeting right here at City Hall, so we're gonna kind of go out of order with our agenda. And we are going to actually start with our subcommittee report. So we're going to knock those out real quick. Um, the Fullerton Collaborative, we we do all kinds of great work and support all the work in the city, but we do try to focus um, most of our work around these four uh, subcommittee areas. Um, we really push to, um, to make changes in these areas within our city. So first, I am going to have Christian come up, and he is the co-chair of our next gen group and right after him I will have Peter Hernandez. <laughs> Thanks Leanna, sorry I uh, was so far away. Are we on online right now? Yeah. Okay, great. Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Wow what a packed house. Um, as Leanna mentioned my name is Christian. I am one of the two co-chairs of the Next Gen Youth Empowerment formerly at, Re at Risk Youth <laughs> Subcommittee uh, which is a mouthful and uh, every two months our subcommittee gets together and we bring together uh, leaders of youth serving nonprofits around town. We share services, we update each other on what's going on. Uh, we give each other an opportunity to refer services to each other's necks of the woods. Uh, and all in all, we get to get together um, to be able to leverage one another's resources um, for the sake of our local youth and meeting, meeting their need. So uh, we just had a meeting last Thursday. Again, we meet once every two months. We only meet for about 30 to 45 minutes online. And what we found is that as a youth serving leader, if you invest that 30 minutes every two months, that's just six times a year, then you come away knowing the current state of what's going on in the youth serving community here in Fullerton. So I'm gonna uh, pull out my phone and remind myself when our next meeting is. Again, since we're bi-monthly and we just had a meeting, we're gonna be getting together again next on Thursday, October 6th. We meet on Zoom at noon. And so um, I'll be sending out a Zoom invite for that because we send it out pretty far in advance. And if you're, if you're not on the list and you would love to be added to our next gen list, please come see me after the meeting and I will get you added onto our uh, contact email list. So, yeah, that's all I got. Thank you. Okay, and next from our health and wellness subcommittee representing Move More, Eat Healthy is Peter Hernandez. It's nice to see you in real life. I know. Nice <laughs> other person. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, so one of the other subcommittees for the Fullerton Collaborative is our Move More Eat Healthy com subcommittee that's focused on promoting and creating a culture of health and wellness here in the city of Fullerton. And so in the beginning of the summer on May 1st, we actually had the pleasure of relaunching our Soda Free Summer. Um, I know during the past few years, about I wanna say three years ago, we launched our first annual Soda Free Summer. And so we had such a huge success with that campaign that we wanted to relaunch it. And so we had the pleasure of doing that this year. Um, I just wanted to provide a brief overview of the statistics that we have thus far. And so the Soda Free Summer was launched on May 1st and will be concluding on August 31st. Um, during the past three months uh, with Move More Eat Healthy, we've had the pleasure of participating in 90 community events in the city of Fullerton that includes both indirect and direct education classes out in the community, such as the concerts in the park, nutrition classes with the YMCA program at the Cal State Fullerton Center for, for Cal State Fullerton's Center for Healthy Neighborhoods and so on and so forth, the city of Fullerton. And so we really collaborated to, to again, create that culture of health and wellness. At these 90 community events, we've had 2,814 participants partake in these different community events. And of those 2,814 participants, 
with the soda free summer, a strategy that we've been using has been creating a healthy lifestyle goal that will improve one's health and well being. And so, of those 28 14 participants, 1,727 actually created this healthy goal for themselves. And so, another strategy that we've been invoking with this campaign is really following up with participants to see how they're doing. And so every Friday we work with our student interns to conduct follow-up calls to see how everyone's doing with their goals. Um, so with the Move More Eat Healthy subcommittee meeting, we are still meeting in a virtual platform. And so if anyone is interested in partaking in, in the meetings, our meetings are the fourth Wednesday of every month from 9.30 to 10.30 in the morning. In August, our meeting will be August 24th. So, thank you. Thank you so much, Peter. And in the uh, the vein of Move More Eat Healthy, I am teaching a, oh, sorry, Kevin. Yeah, right. um, I'm offering a free adult hip hop fitness class on Thursday, August 25th. So if you'd like to attend that, it's Thursday, August 25th at 7.30 teaching it myself free for anybody who wants to attend just to get us moving and not really making the focus on exercise and fitness but just moving and getting our fitness through dancing and feeling good so if you're interested in that see me after the meeting i could give you the details and the location but next we have jason phillips he has an update for our homeless task force I would love to go to that class. Kevin and I used to have a hip hop you, you dance team. Kind of. <laughs> amazing. Kevin, don't deny it. Um, so um, we're finally starting up our homelessness subcommittee or task force again in our, our meetings this Thursday. So um, there was a little bit of a problem in the email. I said 12 to 1, and then in the RSVP it says 1 to 2. So uh, we're going with one to two. So everyone's nodding their head. No one seems angry with me right now. Mm -hmm. I thought in the e it said Wednesday. Is it Wednesday or Thursday? <laughs> oh, no. it's, it's Wednesday. See, I oh, should no, not be up there giving any announcements. <laughs> um, it will be Wednesday from one to two. Lisa, you need to be giving these announcements. Okay, right. uh, <laughs> one to two, and really we're just exploring what works for everyone. Why would we gather? What's going to be the purpose? Are we going to collaborate? Are we going to just be sharing information, talking about getting updates, what's happening in the city, the county, and the state? Or what are we going to do? So come prepared to say what do you need, what do you want out of this collaboration? that make any sense? And it's gonna be at the Hope Center, which is still not quite ready, which is what the city um, is starting to collaborate with other cities around homelessness. So it'll be up by St. Jude and the information's in the email. If you're not on the homelessness subcommittee email, then please come talk to me. So Wednesday, yes, and one so to if, two. So the RSC, if you, if you RSVP on Eventbrite, you got an email that said it was 12 to 1. We'll resend that so you have the one to two times. Yeah, I'm set, I'll send an email. I'm working on it actually right now. So it'll go we'll out um, right after this meeting. Okay. Perfect. Thank you. And last but not least, we have Helene Morris doing our updates for our early childhood subcommittee. Thank you, Leanna. Hi, I'm Dr. Helene Morris, and I'm the Director of Administrative Services for the Fullerton School District. I also serve on the Early Childhood Subcommittee, and I have updates from Dr. Trang Lai, the Director of Child Development Services in the Fullerton School District, who also leads this committee. So at the next Early Childhood Subcommittee meeting, we hope to be reviewing new data from the Spring 2022 EDI data collection. If you're asking, what's, what's EDI? EDI stands for Early Developmental Index, and the EDI is a population-based measure of early childhood development and school readiness in five key domains. So the domains are physical health, social competence, emotional maturity, language and cognitive skills, and communication skills and general knowledge. So if you're interested in coming to our next um, subcommittee meeting, it will take place Monday, August 29th, that's Monday, August 29th, at 3 p.m. 
via Zoom. So, so easy. And if you're like, hey, how do I get the Zoom link? You can email train live directly. That is at her request. And if you're like, what is your email? It's train, T-R-A-N-G underscore Y, L-A-I, at myfsc.org. That's myfsc.org. So we hope to see you there via Zoom. And if you humor me for one minute, I saw Leanna taking pictures, but you know, sometimes you get that urge to do a selfie, and I don't think I'm very good at it, but I would love to take Let's a selfie with all of you. Can, can we try it? <laughs> yes. It's yes. like crickets right now. Let's see how it goes. Okay, first you probably have to do the camera on selfie mode, right? Okay. All right, let's smile. Cheek. Okay, let's turn the phone the right way. So the right okay, one, two, three, cheese. And cheese. All right, good job. We, we tried it, right? Something fun. Thank you so much. Okay, before we get into our main presentation, we do have an update from the library with uh, Ms. Judith Booth who's going to help us out. We are so fortunate to have this amazing room that you welcome us in every month. All right. If you look at my tag, it does say Judith Booth. You can only marry into that. Please just call me Judith. <laughs> Anyway, so the library, we're going along. We, we realize we do have reduced hours, um, but we have, uh, right now we're doing our August broth group programming. We just finished that summer reading club for our children's group, the adult library reading club goes through the end of August, so there's still time um, to read books and also be in for a drawing for a one-year park pass. Do you all understand what that means, right? Yeah. Well, you obviously, we, you know we have park passes that check out from the library for a one-day uh, free parking pass at a state park. Oh, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. This must be news for you, obviously. Yeah. Yeah. We've got to have Jason up, day, up his game when he comes here. <laughs> <laughs> um, we only have maybe five or six of them. They have had a survey, so hopefully we'll get more to check out. But it's for the community to share. We want to make sure that everybody, I know in, in uh, Orange County we only have maybe three state parks, but you know, it's, it's a two-week checkout, so you could drive further in California if you wanted to, to use a state park. Um, we have, uh, we'll have our children's programming, Get Back, Toddler, and Story Time. And then also we have uh, a huge game group that comes in the first Saturday of the month and they play board games. This game, I think we could all give you, get you in tables and that's about how many gamers we had in here playing board games. So um, that's a lot of fun with their programming and we're continuing to expand that. Um, we, uh, I'm going to get my glasses on here, a few notes. Um, so we are continuing to hire a few staff in the children's area. We're a little bit short in that, but we're continuing to hire staff. Um, be, be aware also that we're just not, we're the library, but this, there's actually more to that. So there's also, besides all of you that know about the library and promote us, we also have our friends at the library. We hope you've been in their bookstore. They're open daily from 11 to 3. They have a big book sale that's going to be in this room on September 24th and 25th. And they are back at the same revenue they had before COVID. So we're really proud of them. They have done awesome. And as you know, there's three prongs to the friends. There's those book sales. There's the uh, bookstore store itself and also their Amazon store. When people in this community, yes, would be the education community, when they donate books that can go for more than two or three dollars, those friends are on it. And if you've ever been back in our back, dumpster area, you'll notice about four bins. Three are yellow, one's blue. That is part of us being belonging to the Discovery Books organization that takes our discards and actually moves the books around the world. And yes, at the very end, there may be a few they have to recycle. But just think about when people donate the books at the shed there at our back dumpster area, that is starting a long circle of literacy for even the world. And we're so thankful for all the donations people give to us. Well, besides the friends, we also have a foundation. They, of course, as, as you know, they monetize the Bass and Cherry property. That's the, the little uh, condo area that's right across from Morningside. And uh, we're so happy that they are the ones that are supporting 
our uh, Hunt Library with like the library technology part. We're uh, very fortunate to get a grant, but it's 80% funded by the FCC and 20% is being funded by our foundation and also our, there's smaller contracts for contractors and that is also supported by the foundation. We're really very, very, very thankful to them and I know that they're in store for more things to go on in the library portion of Hunt. And of course you know we have the great big, the two big grants, the two and a half million that was requested by Sharon Cork Silva, the Assemblywoman, and then the other two and a half uh, from uh, State Senator Josh Newman and another quarter of a million for uh, arts, cultural, and library services programming. So uh, I think the roof is in the in the works, right? It's going to actually improve the R value of the the uh, the top of the library. And we just did the uh, the the walkthrough for the interior improvements. And when I say improvements, it's just bringing back the building. Um, to its original state. I always think of that building as, uh, it's just so, what a wonderful thing it is that it's not in Palm Springs where it looks like so many things in Palm Springs. It's here in Fullerton, right? So it is gonna be super cool. As you know, that design has held up over the years and we're really excited about it. And then we'll get into the site improvements, which of course means uh, moving the, the dog park to the, uh, the Brand Dam area and um, and get making it ready for events. You know, we have that whole, whole, huge portico in front, which is like a stage. The back could be made actually more into an amphitheater. You know, it's got the berm back there, let alone the rooms inside to use for programming. So we're super excited and exploring more uh, opportunities. There is an RFP out. If you want to go to the city website and look at that, feel free, okay? If you want to have more ideas how to make that happen. Uh, and then also, uh, the trustees, okay? I know a lot of you really get entertained by going to the council meetings, but you know you should consider coming to the library board of trustees. And best of all, just like the council meetings, that's one of the wonderful things about our city, right? Is we have a commitment, obviously, to putting things on Zoom, right? So the board meeting for the trustees is not happening in here; it's happening in the council chambers, and you can log in. It's at 6 p.m. on the Thursdays of the month, except for November and December when these holidays get in the way. So you'd have to you know, check the schedule for that. And they're very supportive of the library and also what's going on at Hub Library. Um, I think that does it. And thank you. That's awesome. Thank you, Judy. Okay, we are going to get into our main presentation um, today. For this month, we are focusing on citywide community engagement and collaboration with Fullerton moving forward in our mindset. Um, I'm very pleased to bring first Alice Loya. She is the City of Fullerton Deputy Director of Parks and Recreation. Let's welcome Alice. Good afternoon, everybody. We're going to tag team this, so I'm going to start it, and then we're going to get into programming with Corey Lance. So first, I want to say that uh, we're starting a whole bunch of new projects this coming year, or park projects. Um, we're starting a park ambassador program. We are collaborating with the police department, and we're looking for volunteers um, who are available during the day to join our park collaborative. I mean, our park ambassador program, and you can go on the City of Fullerton's. Police Department's website to look that up if you're interested interested in that. It's volunteer, uh, but it would really help us out with uh, patrolling our parks and helping us figure out what to clean and what to improve. Tonight we have the Cultural Arts Subcommittee at, in the City Council Chambers, and that is a subcommittee of the Parks and Recreation Commission. And we just kind of started that, and that is to to try to get all of the arts organizations in the city of Fullerton together to start collaborating. We are hoping that once we get presentations by our, the, all the art groups, that we can start a new, a new program. Well, it's actually not a new event. It's an event we used to do years ago called Night in Fullerton, where there was free art at every mm -hmm. art facility in Fullerton for the night, and people could drive around and look at either um, either performances or whatever they had at that location. So we're trying to do that. And please reach out to me. Um, my email address is alice.loya at cityoffullerton.com. 
if you are an arts organization and we haven't reached out to you, because we're trying to get everyone. so so far we've got the muckenthaler, um the fullerton museum, cal state fullerton, fullerton college all the arts for all the kids. but we're trying to get as many arts organizations on board. and it doesn't have to be visual arts. it can be performing arts as well. so we have that tonight at five thirty if you're interested. Um, we don't have much of attendance. in fact, um, i think only one person came <laughs> last time. but let me tell you about our park improvement projects. so i don't know if you all know. Can talk a little. okay. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's why. <laughs> Pacific Drive Park, we just finished that one and we opened it up to the community. we are, the next phase is to work on the restrooms. Um, Juanita Cook Trail next to Oakmont, we're going to be widening that. Um, pretty soon we're in design phase. Uh, Gilman Park, if you live by Gilman Park, the bridges aren't doing so well, so we're replacing all the bridges. Um, let's see, the community center, we're doing quite a few projects there. We're doing an AV upgrade, because it doesn't work. Uh, we're adding security cameras, and we're um, doing some changes in the fitness area to try to make it bigger. Emory Park, that we're going to, uh, our plan is to uh, replace the playground and the picnic area with a new one. Uh, Bass and Cherry Greenbelt, we'd like to make some improvements. Right now, it's an unimproved, two unimproved parcels along Bass and Cherry, and we're going to turn that into more of a, a natural greenbelt area with trails. Hillcrest Park, our next phase will be Valley View, and that will take some time because it's actually it goes from Valley View all the way up to the Isaac Walton cabin. So it's a large park. And I know Judy talked a little bit about the dog park. So yes, we are moving the dog park from the Hunt Branch Library Park to Brea Dam Park. We are almost done with our design phase. On Wednesday night, we're meeting with the Pooch Park Foundation to go to review the plans and help us to finalize them. This should be done in about less than a year. So that'll be pretty good. Let's see, talk about, oh, the Amherst Park, which is right across the street with the community centers in Amherst Park and the ball field. We're just installing taller netting because hope, the hope athletes are very good and <laughs> <laughs> they hit balls higher than our, our league. The golf course, um, we're also coming netting at the Fullerton Golf Course. The golf course is doing really well. so. I encourage you all to go to the Fullerton Golf Course because it helps fund programs like Concerts in the Park, the Tennis Center, and the Fullerton Sports Complex. So all the funding that goes to those programs comes from the Fullerton Golf Course. So I encourage you all to go to the Fullerton go Golf Course if you play golf or take a lesson if you want to learn how to play golf. Tennis Center, we are finishing the Wi-Fi upgrades and we're going to put in windscreens and we're doing um, the court painting on that, so it's going to get a little bit of a refresher. Union Pacific Trail, still an ongoing project. We're still trying to figure out what we're going to do there. And we are replacing the fencing at Independence Park Pool. Right now it's a little low, so we are having some issues with the homeless coming, climbing over and using it for, for a big bathtub. So we're going to put a taller fencing to try to eliminate that problem. I think that's all I have for um, for park projects, and I'm going to turn it over to Corey Lance, and Corey's going to talk about programming in our parks. Okay, hi everybody. It's nice to see everyone in person. Um, and thank you all so much for, for letting us have the opportunity to speak today. I am always so thankful every time we get the chance to talk about our programming. Um, no matter how many flyers and e-blasts and <laughs> brochures we print, it seems like I still can't ever get enough word out about our programming. So I have two different handouts for you. I didn't bring enough for everyone, so I do have them up at the front uh, if you're wanting to grab them on your way out. The first is our Fullerton Connect, which is our brochure that we print three times a year and lists off all of our different programs. It has been redesigned and printed for the first time since the pandemic, so we were very excited about our summer brochure. 
and then i also printed for you or brought over a handful of our fullerton senior newsletter this is printed monthly and we have it available both online at the fullerton community center website and also in person at our front desk at the community center across the street um and i i did also forget to introduce myself i am one of the parks and recreation supervisors that is officed over across the street at the community center so i'm going to run through a couple of our exciting programs um first wanted to start off by talking about our events um, we do have our weekly Wednesday Farmers Market that is continuing. It is annual and continues every Wednesday. It has moved from here at the library to across the street at the community center. It's every Wednesday morning. We are continuing on with our Thursday night Farmers Market that will be ending this season on August 25th. So there's only a couple more weeks. So you want to make sure to, to get out there and check out those bands before the season ends. Also wanted to talk about our summer concerts. So this year we did shift a little bit with, with all of our issues with being short staffed and I know we're all experiencing that. Um, we, it was challenging for us to have both the farmer's market and summer concerts on Wednesdays. So this year they actually shifted to Fridays. Um, the first concert was last Friday. We have two more set and they go until August 19th. They've been really fun. It was a great turnout last Friday. So hopefully you can join us out at the Fullerton Sports Complex the next two Fridays. Also um, wanted to highlight an exciting new event that the community center is working um, with the county and the uh, board of supervisors. Um, uh, District 4 is actually, um, Supervisor Jeff JV will be hosting a job fair with us on October 19th. And for anyone interested in having a booth or just attending, October 19th, there is going to be a job fair at the community center in the gymnasium from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. I'm gonna really highlight this because I know all of us are struggling with staffing. So if anyone is interested in having a booth or has questions, please feel free to contact me. I'll help get you in contact so we can make sure to get you all signed up. And then also just wanted to talk about the flu clinic, wedding show, health fair, all those programs that typically happen at the community center every year will be continuing on again this year. Dates have yet to be set, set, but you can check our brochure and our website to find more information about the events. And then wanted to also just acknowledge some of the exciting things that did happen this summer. We're getting ready to wrap up the summer. Our new brochure will be mailed out in the next three weeks. So it'll hit the mailboxes early September and we'll highlight programs from September through January. Um, but to close out this summer, we were really proud to announce that we had over 300 contract class sessions, which is just different, different types of programs and classes. Um, this summer, we offered over 60 different classes, and that was 300 sessions in total. So we served over 12,000 participants this year. So um, it was really exciting. It was a great summer, super successful. It was really fun. So much positive feedback. Um, and you know, we don't hear enough of that, so <laughs> it's always exciting to talk about. Um, also just wanted to acknowledge our senior programming. Um, we're back up to 45 weekly programs that ranges from bingo, loteria, we have uh, karaoke, so there's all these different types of programs that are open to seniors, 60 and older in Fullerton. Um, we have a number of different programs that did kick off because of the pandemic that were so successful that we've actually continued them. Things like our Art at Home program, our Discover Fullerton program has actually now transitioned just from a video series and has moved into our in-person tours where we're actually accepting volunteers. For anyone who is interested in becoming a tour guide, right now we have nine different tours. Um, so there's curriculum already set and built out by Amy All, our amazing Parks and, Recre Parks and Recreation educator who joined us from the museum. And she has built out this fabulous uh, curriculum with nine different walks that focuses on different historical facts and interesting uh, points throughout Fullerton. So there's a civic tour. Um, there is, she's developing a new veterans tour that's gonna be highlighting Loma Vista in November. So you can check out our website and look at those videos. And if you're interested in joining us and becoming a tour guide, we're, we're, we're looking. So right now, we're, those tours, if you're interested in taking them, are offered once a month in person, but you can still register for them online and watch the video series on our YouTube. We have two different YouTube channels. <laughs> we have our Fullerton Community Center YouTube, which now has over 200 videos posted since the beginning of the pandemic. because They're all program-based. And then our Discover Fullerton channel has over 100 videos that feature different highlighted features and interesting, interesting history of Fullerton. 
so with that, I am, you know, actually two more things I did want to mention. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Exciting. I could talk forever. So You're really, fine. we got to like get this stuff. This is exciting. So, like, All these things happening. It is. It's the fun stuff. Yes. yes. So um, for us, we, I did also want to highlight our senior transportation program. I feel like that's often a program that kind of flies under the radar and a lot of people don't know about. Senior mobility is a huge issue. And we are very proud of the program that we run at the community center. We have two different options. We offer discounted bus passes at $7. Normally they're $22. So $7 bus passes that are offered to Fullerton seniors 60 and older. They're a month worth of free bus rides or $7 bus rides, I should say. And um, they, the seniors can buy a new bus pass monthly. We also offer transportation with our yellow cab service. So our seniors can enroll in the program. They can get free rides to and from the community center for any of our programs. And then additionally, we do offer discounted rides to medical trips within yeah. Fullerton and then outside of Orange County, or within Orange County outside of Fullerton. So there's more information available, but if anyone knows anybody who's struggling with getting to medical appointments or looking for socialization activities, uh, the Fullerton Community Center is open and we would love to have them. All right. So do you want to share your email address? Oh, yes, absolutely, yeah. Thank you. Um, so my email address is cori.lantz, C-O-R-I dot L-A-N-T-Z at cityoffullerton.com. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Corey. You know, I didn't write down the job fair. What was the date on that again? October 19th. October 19th. Awesome. Okay, so last but definitely not least, um, very excited to introduce to you our new city manager, Mr. Eric Levitt. Thank you so much for joining us, Eric. I know you popped over here after a meeting. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate it. So, so thank you. I appreciate the accommoda accommodation and going with yeah. the other presentations first. My name's, um, and I actually brought handouts, but I, I underestimated the number of people that were going to be in this meeting. So I have 15 handouts, but <laughs> I know I way I was thinking a small group. So, um, but. I so I don't know how much time you have because I think you only are able to go yeah, till three thirty. Until three thirty. So I'll I'll be I'll try I'll shorten the presentation a little bit and really what I think is important is the Q and A and and I think that's the most important. So um, again, my name is Eric Levitt. I'm the city manager with the city of Fullerton, and I'll give you a little bit of brief background on myself and then um, what I think the city council is looking to do and how we would like to engage you. I don't have specific ideas, but I think you are a valuable community group. Um, community, it's not an organization, but a group of organizations that can bring a lot of energy and have shown in the past that you've brought a lot of energy to the community and to Fullerton. And I would like to do well, what we can do to partner together um, as we move forward, because that's all, that's sort of what me, Personally, that's what I'm about. I think partnership and working together is important for a community and a city, and that makes everyone more successful in a variety of ways. Eric, so, if you could hold the mic. Oh, up. sorry. Yeah, that's okay. Well, but if I hold it lower than no one hears a word I say, <laughs> I can't be held accountable at that point. So, <laughs> so, so, um, so first I'll just briefly, um, again, I'm gonna just try to go through this briefly and then hit on um, your Q&A, questions and answers that you want or comments. I mean, it can be a variety of things. Um, I've been a city manager for slightly over 20 years. It'll actually be, um, it's actually now been, let me see, what is today, 2022? So it's been 21 years actually, just last week. It's been 21 years I've been a city manager and I've been in, this is my fifth community to be a city manager. Um, on average, I've been a city manager, and I, I hit on all the cities, but I'll, I'll just hit on it briefly. I was in Sedona, Arizona, and I was a city manager there for about um, about eight years. 
I always proudly say I was the longest tenure, still today, the longest tenure state manager in the history of Sedona. I was then um, in Janesville, Wisconsin for just under five years. Um, significance of Janesville was um, within 30 days of my arrival in Janesville, General Motors, which was the largest, or was the first General Motors plant in the country, actually shut down. It was in 2000, the end of 2008, and so we lost about 6,500 jobs. We worked um, on the job loss and job creation, retraining people, and then even more important, than, or just as important as that, just the cultural change that occurred in the community and was starting to evolve during that time because it went from a General Motors town to who are we moving forward. And then from there, it went to Simi Valley, uh, California, which is just up the, up the road from here, about six years in Simi Valley, right at six years. And we worked a lot on fiscal issues. We had a lot of fiscal constraint issues and a variety of development issues. And then Alameda for three years, um, I was there during the pandemic. Um, and for those that don't uh, know much about Alameda, it's where the former Naval Air Station is. And so a lot of issues with homelessness, a lot of issues with right outside Oakland, a lot of issues in dealing with the base or former base, and a lot of issues in dealing with just um, well-being of the community, especially during COVID. With that, with that experience, the city council here for many years, including this city council, has really had three main visions or three main goals that they've always looked at, and that's fiscal sustainability, public safety, infrastructure, and city assets. Um, when I look at it, and I put a little brief thing of Fullerton moving forward, I think that's a great statement that was from the state of the city this year from the mayor. And I think, well, infrastructure and public safety are very important, as well as fiscal sustainability. Some things that sometimes get lost on people is the quality of life. Why, why do you like living and being a part of um, Fullerton? Why do you like working in Fullerton? And I think quality of life and what you see is that important quality of life is a big factor for a lot of residents and for a lot of businesses. And so quality of life includes things such as the library, includes things such as parks and rec. So we're focused on these big items. We also need to figure out what can we do to continue to enhance people's quality of life. And I see that as where this partnership that you bring is so critical to, to Fullerton and to the community. Economic development, that's always been at the heart of what I've always done as a city manager because part of that fiscal sustainability is trying to work with businesses and bring in certain types of tax bases to try to help facilitate being able to, to maintain and add services to the community as well as deal with different items such as infrastructure. Uh-oh, I missed one. Okay, tackling homelessness. I think that's an issue that I could see potential partnerships in the future as we work collectively together or certain, certain members of this organization work together. Homelessness has been an issue that has um, the state of California has been dealing with for, for many years and I think Fullerton has tried to deal with it. And I think we've made some successful um, moves forward in a variety of ways. And I look at, at um, homelessness as two issues. They aren't really two issues, but I look at them as two separate things that you look at. One is, what do you do for those individuals? What do you do for those individuals who are homeless that are really trying to figure out how to get out of that state and try to move forward with their lives? And there's a variety of opportunities that we have and services that we work with. And I see those areas as areas that we could work with this organization. And then there's the quality of life for residents that are impacted from people who are homeless especially people that maybe have either minor or major criminal elements within their homelessness and the, and, and the encampment and they create quality of life for the community and, that, and there's that impact and how do we deal with that? And that's a different impact. Those are two different elements of homelessness, quality of life for those that um, are homeless and quality of life issues that impact the community at large too. And so trying to deal with that, we've, we've got a variety of things we do. We have a navigation center, we have the Hope Center. We have what's called HLOs, which I'm sure you're, you're familiar with, homeless liaison officers throughout the police department. But how can we work, and that might be an opportunity as we move forward, how we work together. Staffing and city services, how do you make those go to their fullest? And how I see it going to their fullest is creating partnerships, creating partnerships with not-for-profits, with other government agencies, 
with other um, businesses and how can you facilitate and by combined services or combined working together, how can you create more um, opportunities for your residents and businesses? Um, I'm gonna skip that one. And then I had development projects, but I'm not gonna hit on that. But I will hit on one last thing and then open it up for a Q&A. Um, the one last thing I'd like to hit on a little bit is um, going to quality of life. What I've seen here in the community and when, when I've sat here for the last three months or two to three months and working is making sure that we create what I call um, timelines and specific um, project scenarios because what I've seen is we have a lot of opportunities in Fullerton that people are really energized around such as, you know, I always like to look at things such as the Fox Block, I look at things such as the hunt, West Coyote Hills, and some people have sometimes expressed concerns that those haven't moved, or at least they have to me, let's put it that way, haven't moved as, as forward, forward as they could. And I, I'm just giving three examples, there's other examples out there. And what I'd like to do is try to figure out timelines and be able to move those types of things forward in a way that the community can grasp and can take hold of and feel like there's a completion there. There's an end to those projects and there's an end where the community sees the benefit coming back. And I think that's one thing that I see as an element that, that could be a value to the city of Fullerton, the residents and businesses and not-for-profits as we move forward. With that, um, I'm open for q and I'm open for comments. Um, I sort of skipped through some of it because I was trying to get a feel for what this group would like to talk about, and I don't know if that works for you or not. Yeah, we could do that. I can do the mic and move around the room, and you can have that mic. Let me see. And I am always willing Thanks. to come back and talk with you on specific yes. items as we move forward, too. All right, here we go. I'll get my exercise today. I'm moving more healthy right now. <laughs> Thank you for being here today. Um, I was curious about your experience as being an LMU. You said that you had some special incidents, being chosen to deal with during um, COVID. But is there some takeaway or some lessons that you think that you can bring here to Fullerton to make a difference? Seems like a tough nut to crack. Um, what, 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 what do you see as small opportunities um, to help um, resolve the homelessness problem in Fullerton? Oh, so for, for the homelessness. Um, issue in general and I think Fullerton actually it's it's interesting I think is a little bit ahead of Alameda in some ways because um, we had some extensive services there such as the food bank we had a very extensive food bank system but as far as um, that we we actually had a whole scenario that we used a part of the base especially during the went up so dramatically that we actually used staffing our parks and rec staff and we actually use them to help be able to guide and, and create that system up there um, and working with with that in partnership here I would say the navigation system the nav navigation centers I think are are good and I think several of them have what I consider their navigation s services um, so they actually have a variety of different services such as medical and dental so I think you're ahead again we didn't have anything like that in Alameda so I really appreciate having that here um, for individuals that are homeless um, or even individuals in general um, because there are you don't necessarily have to be homeless to get some of those, those services um, I see that what we did is we created um, an internal staffing task force and we also worked with um, other outside not-for-profit agencies we were trying to get a wellness center put together that would help for um, homeless veterans to to be able to it never came through they're still working on it in fact I just got a call over the weekend that they just won on another hearing but that um, we were trying to move forward and trying to provide those services and have a facility that they could both be housed as well as as well as um, working with them. So I, I think it's not necessarily specific projects, but the opportunity to work with you if there's ideas that come forward. And so that's what I 
how I would see using that experience here at Fullerton. Because I think everyone has their own unique needs and ha and then there's unique ways that you can work with people based on that. Did that answer your question or at least yeah. partially? Hi, good afternoon and welcome to Fullerton. Um, fiscal responsibility. Uh, my concern has been uh, downtown. Um, we have a central business district that has 58 alcohol licenses. And uh, by alcohol beverage control rules, uh, Fullerton is entitled to 54 licenses. And uh, not only do we have 58, but it costs us taxpayers up to a million or a million and a half dollars a year. We're subsidized. And the city staff recommended license number 59 that would have put two retail businesses out of business. And I, you know, it's like, I don't understand why the city staff wants to promote all these bars downtown. And, and we're subsidizing. Um. So is that more of a statement or a question? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to answer that. So I, the license, when was the license that came forward that was recommended that you're oh, talking about? It was, it was the world of beer that would have put Blank Hill furniture store and the plant shop out of business. Oh, okay. Fortunately, there were enough people and, and uh, I think the, uh, well, anyway, but the staff. No, that's helpful to know. The staff recommended approval for that. So I'd have to, I don't know enough about that specific element, so I'd have to find out more on that. Okay. But it's good to have, I don't have a lot of answers for that specific <laughs> question, but I think it's good for me to understand that and understand that concern is out there. It's the taxpayers a couple million dollars to clean up the, the graffiti and the throw up and the vandalism that happens with all the people who are coming out of bars in the middle of the night. All the fighting, all the police call, being called to it. We had one instance where over 60 people were having to be arrested one night. So, 60 people is a huge street brawl. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Word out onto the street. Uh, Mayor Jung was part of, uh, was witness to it because he was uh, um, doing a PD right or wrong at the time. Okay. <laughs> no, no, I understand. I understand what you're saying, and I think um, we have tried. We're trying to do different things to to work on that. I think we have a system where there's a review by the police chief if there for certain types of incidents, and we've talked about that because some people have considered that not as effective as it was intended to be when that that system was put into place. But but it's good to have these comments. It's good to have this information understanding. Oh, can I make one comment? One, well, one more, one more comment. Um, the reason we get extra licenses is that the ABC has a rule that says that that is against over-concentration. And I've been to two public hearings to deny licenses, which the administrative law judges granted. And the reason, the thing that overcomes the rule against overcrowding is that the city says it's necessary and, or convenient for these people to get a license. So that's how we got so many, is the city has been saying it's necessary or convenient for these people to get a license. Which typically went through the planning commission. Um, no, I don't think so. I think the, the, well, the development department does that. Yeah, it could be either or, but you're probably right. It's probably the probably planning commission only deals with CUP on it, but you're probably right. As far as the license itself probably goes through the development review. Right. Okay, we have a question here. Sure. So, okay, I'm, I'm Father Dennis Chris from uh, St. Philip and Easy Parish. And first, thank you, know, thank you for taking the job. <laughs> <laughs> Tough one. Um, I suppose one thing I, I'm just wondering, because some of these cities you might have already had the experience. Yeah. My experience here, which is six years in Fullerton, is that this actually is a rather divided city. 
uh, economically. And uh, where this plays out is, in fact, partly with, with the question of homelessness, that pretty much all the homeless infrastructure is in our part of the city, southwest Florida. And, uh, you know, and it's just something that, that even, you know, as we go with the affordable housing projects and so forth, the only one that has been considered and then approved, once again, has been in our part of town. And uh, it's not to say, you know, that that this, uh, you know, that, I mean, these two places have to be somewhere and you have to be generous. But, I mean, to be mindful of that and to find some way to reward this part of town. You know, just, I mean, in this past week, it really struck me. I went to, uh, uh, well, OC United's group there on, uh, you know, it, yeah, their, their new center in Gilbert Street or whatever there, and then the, their old center. And, I mean, it would actually be interesting for, for the most of the people here, take a look at the parks in our part of town and uh, say to yourselves, is this how really you would want a park to look like or function as, as opposed to some very, very nice parks in other places? So I just, I don't know, I suppose it is a comment, but, but perhaps you can you reflect on it of how, you know, how to m make things more equitable or if one is going to ask a particular section of town to once again, you know, take, take a, a heavy burden on something to see if there be some way to reward them for that as well. Thank you. So, so can I ask a question? So on reward, what do you mean by reward? Are you talking about like the parks and, and how the... Yeah, I mean, in a sense that the parks be better. I mean, you know, that there be some sort of scholarship opportunity. I mean, you know, I... You know, there's, there was a kid, I mean, in, in our, yeah, in, in our, I mean, he can solve the Rubik's Cube in like 30 seconds, you know, I mean, just really a remarkable thing, and you just look at the opportunities that this poor kid is going to have, you know, and they're not very high, you know, it, it's somehow to, to at least, you know, help, you know, help the parents and the kids you know, to, to somehow to, to help them along so they, they have a better chance at life, you know, in, in the future. You know, among the, in that, but, but yeah, certainly the parks, if they could be cleaned up, that would be cool. Thank you. So I, so I think, and I, you're right, it's probably more of a statement at this point than yeah. be, me being able to answer. But that goes back, part of what you talked about does go back to quality of life and what the residents in that area are looking for. And um, because of our financial situation and how we've allocated funds, quality of life and parks and maintenance of parks it is a challenge at times, but it's something that I'm looking at, how can we deal with some of those issues? Probably not to your satisfaction anytime soon, but maybe goes more towards your satisfaction eventually. Thank you, I want to speak a little bit about parks. Um, I come from a public, uh, from a parks and recreation background, and, and public space is really, really dear to my heart. But mostly because of what you said, um, for, in regards to quality of life, what we found in the city that I was at is partnering with local nonprofits and partnering with other national nonprofits to be able to help facilitate the improvements of parks exists. It really, but it really comes down to the city's willingness to be able to partner with groups like this. So I guess my question is. How open are you to have these discussions? Uh, I'll give you a good example. I think you've done four Kaboom projects here. That's an investment that uh, a nonprofit would make about $8,500 and you end up with a $60,000, $70,000 new playground. But the critical part, and I think this addresses your question, is that when you get volunteers involved, if you, I don't know if you've experienced it, but the, part, the, the playgrounds are really, really wonderful. But when you get volunteers involved, they tend to take care of that part as well. So not only are you facilitating an improvement that is relevant to the green around, you're also getting more security. And we found that our vandalism in the parks that we're at actually was less. The last thing I did want to say also is that the parks are the second most learning environment for kids. And there's a ten tendency for, again, I talked to my public works brothers and sisters in the city I work at, that public works department will build the parks. The people that really 
the one at playgrounds, the people that really understand that is actually your, your um, child development professionals. Getting them involved with the kind of choices that, that should be made for the play equipment actually creates another learning environment. And so the parents that come out and use the parks can see that and, and, and the kids are learning there. And, and so I just wanted to ask you again, how, how willing are you willing to entertain groups like this to be able to help you in improving the parks? Well, as I said at the beginning, I, I'm, I believe partnerships are important, so I think that goes to your question. Um, so I am willing to, as uh, a manager, have those partnerships, how they, how they take form will probably vary depending upon the project and depending upon the area, but I'm definitely willing to do that. Um, you have to have a certain amount of staffing still um, dedicated toward it, but I think it's a valuable thing because I think you get more um, you get more benefit in the long run. I, I would agree with many of your statements you made. Um, but I, I don't know that I always know the perfect place to have that partnership, so part of it has to come both ways as far as where the partnership is. This is it, right here. <laughs> this is it, and I'm, I'm sorry, I'm gonna just go out. I did not like check on my board on this, but I'm just gonna go out on a limb with this right now. I've been a part of this collaborative for over 10 years. I've been a Fullerton business over, owner for 20 years, um, a resident, my children went to Troy, everything you could think of. This is the most amazing group of people that the city does not come to enough. Yeah? And we are here, and we're doing the work. We're doing the work, we have the resources. I implore you to rely on the collaborative and come to us as much as possible because we are here. So connect with everybody, everybody connect afterwards, reach out, but um, we really, really want the city to lean on us for these hard conversations because we have so many amazing professionals here that can support doing whatever we need to make the city better. So that's my, that's my rally. <laughs> So we're, we are, I really want to respect everybody's time and get us out of here on time. So um, if you have any more questions, are they able to contact you by email? Is oh, that the right. best? And I, I have cards here too. Perfect. Okay. So if you have any other questions or want to grab a card from our new city manager and start these conversations and keep them moving, that would be amazing. We will be back here next month, the second Monday of the month. Thank you again. Let's put our hands together for our new manager. If you have any questions about collaborative membership, our new year of memberships are starting right now. There's a QR code on your agenda to renew your membership. Please take care of that. If I don't hear from you, Bev and I are here to answer any questions. Otherwise, we will see you next month. Please attend our subcommittee meetings, and we hope you all have an amazing month and an amazing start of the school year. Thank you so much, everybody. Oh, no. What? I don't know how to turn it off. Well, it's a pleasure. I'm sorry I didn't get to the Thank you, Eric. Thank you. 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 Thank you.